How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that has been over 24 years I have been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close colleagues say if you cut Andy in half it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool. I have now written 134 articles and recorded 30 hours of VMware vSphere videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Experts Exchange awards over the last 10 years working with the Experts Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame at Experts Exchange. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert programme since 2011 and more recently made a VMware vExpert Pro for the last three years. How do and welcome back to another Hancock's VMware half hour. And in this short video, I'm going to show you how to connect to VMware vSphere Hypervisor 8 uh, using the vSphere HTML5 web host client. Uh, I using a browser. Uh, so in the last two videos, um, you've seen me um, install uh, ESXi 8 um, on a HPE ProLiant Gen 8, and you've seen me do an in-place upgrade from 7.03 and also an installation um, on, on bare metal. Um, which actually did actually detect a version of 7.03 um, and we've completely done a reinstallation of that and we specified to use uh, local SSD data store for the OS data. Okay, so using a web browser, um, basically go to your FQDN, uh, not your IP address. And this is what we're presented with. Now, this is an in-place upgrade that we've done on an existing host. So, you know, we've got an awful lot of blue there. We've got uh, an awful lot of yellow there. Um, so I'm actually just going to tidy up. Uh, hopefully this video is going to be compact and concise. Um, just want to go through some several, several issues that we've currently got. So it's telling us that ESXi shell and SSH are enabled. So I'm just going to try and get rid of, so if I select services, uh, so I've selected host, services, disable SSH shell, and exactly the same thing, services, disable ESXi shell. So some, some yellow disappeared. We'll come back to system logging uh, later. Uh, at the moment, we're actually in 60-day evaluation mode. And providing that we don't apply the free license, um, we can use all the bells and whistles uh, in ESXi um, before we apply the free license. If you apply the free license, then you're going to be in free license mode forever and you'll lose the ability to use all the bells and whistles and add to vCenter server. So if you're evaluating, um, or want to use all the bells and whistles in ESXi and vCenter server for 59 days or 60 days, uh, then just leave it run in evaluation mode for the moment. So I'm just going to big X out of that, and I'm going to big X out of that as well. Um, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to tidy up some storage here, if I can. Um, ESXi001 local underscore VMFS6, that's a local data store of SSDs. Uh, but these other data stores here, I'm going to try and delete them because they're no longer in use. Uh, we're going to add, we'll add them back later on. Just so that I've got a nice, clean, I'm just going to big X out of those as well. So they're all gone. So we've got a nice, clean, uh, ESXi with no issues or errors at the moment. I'm going to have a little look at networking. I'm going to have a little look at our VM network, uh, which is uh, obviously we've got a bit of an issue here at the moment. Uh, it actually says that we've got a 100 megabit NIC there. So that's something that I, I need to look at. Um, 
going forward. Um, but one of the things that I actually wanted to do, um, as I said earlier in the last video, that I want to go to manage and I want to go to time and date. And because this is an upgrade, um, it's already syncing to our time servers on site. Now, you may not have a time server on site, uh, so feel free to use um, uh, Internet based uh, time servers. But in fact, here we're actually using a couple of Raspberry Pis as our time server, which have GPS clocks on board. Um, so that that looks OK for the moment. Um, obviously, we've got a little bit of an issue with a 100 megabit NIC here uh, that need to look at. Um, so let's have a little look at ESXi002 and that's actually connect to ESXi002. So again, uh, I'm going to use a web browser. Um, it's auto logging me in uh, using the root password, root username and the password that I specified. Now, normally this is completely normal. If you want to join uh, the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program, then click OK. Now, this was not an in-place upgrade. Uh, this was an installation, so it would have erased. So it's telling me the same thing. Um, so I'm going to big X out of that. I'm going to have a little look at the storage again. And obviously, this is a storage that we wanted to, to keep. Uh, it basically says there's a CentOS ISO on there. So we're going to delete that. Uh, you can see here, this is the OS data folder uh, that ESX is actually created, uh, which supposedly is where all the read and the writes are occurring, which is what has been affecting SD card problems in the past. So I'm going to click close. But what I wanted to check is I wanted to check our time and date. Uh, and so I'm going to edit these NTP settings uh, and I'm going to start and stop with the host and I'm going to feed in the values here 52 54 54 now I did say um, that start and stop with the host so what I am going to do uh, I'm just going to go to the services and I'm just going to start up the NTPD daemon and say start and that should have started it that says running that's confirmed down here by saying it's completed successfully uh, it says it's been started correctly there so hopefully if I go back and have a little look time and date then we're running and we've actually basically got correct time so just to recap uh, it's actually stating that there's a vulnerability issue on this particular server that's probably due to I think probably one of the spectra uh, mitigations um, but what I'm going to do sadly uh, I think I can probably cut and paste that Sadly, um, I remember the kilobit, kilobit, KB article. Uh, yeah, so it is the uh, the L1 terminal spectra vulnerability. Um, resolved in this server, uh, but not resolved in that server. The other thing I'm also noticing as well, I've got an awful lot of Duff virtual machines uh, that it's currently saying are all normal. Um, I don't believe that they are normal because I think this VMFS volume actually refers to yeah, these VMFS volumes. I'm just going to have a little look. Um, yeah, there's nothing on this local disk. So I think that's a little bit of a bug there that's actually telling me that their status is normal because all those would have been initially um, on. So I'm just going to basically turn around and register all those as well. So we've got no virtual machines. Uh, we've got blank SSD data store. Um, this is a blank SSD data store. We've got nothing on here either.
this is okay it's not in maintenance mode this one's still in maintenance mode we've got an exclamation mark at the top so let's just exit out of that okay so i've got a nice green tick there as well um the reason for doing this is because i want to get to a position um in the next video um, and we're doing this a bit differently in this series um in that we're going to deploy vsa vcsa8 vcenter server 8 in the next video uh, on these two servers and then we'll start adding some shared stories to them and um, adding vmotion and ha and drs between these two particular servers in the last video series with vc7 um, i think it was probably we didn't get to actually installing vcenter server until about part 20 um, so i brought that forward so that you can actually see what the installation of vcenter server um, 8 looks like so the only outstanding issue that we've that we've got so far um just quickly looking at our 100 meg nick here and i'm just going to have a little look to see whether or not that that is similar um so we've got a thousand megabit nick there okay so i'm just going to put this on pause and i'm going to run around the back to the um the the switches network switches that are used in this lab and i'm just going to move some cables around um so i'm just going to pause and i'll be back shortly okay i'm uh I'm, I'm back okay so all i've done um is i've disappeared around to the network switch and i've just unplugged the cable from the switch and i plugged it into another port and uh, we've linked up at a gigabit which is uh where we where we should be um it's possible um that we've got a dodgy cable or it's possible that we've got a dodgy port on that switch and to be honest with you really i must get a post-it note or a sticker and stick on that port because i've got a feeling that i've seen this problem before uh where a link only links at 100 meg and it does seem to be specifically to that port so therefore i think i've probably got uh, a broken uh, port on a switch there okay so that's all i wanted to do in this video um so hancock's vmware half hour which is actually turned into about 12 minutes um so a short one today because i wanted to get to a place uh for the next video of where we actually install uh vcenter server 8 so again thanks very much for watching um the second or third uh series uh video um in on vmware vsphere 8 so thanks very much for watching um all the best and come back for the deployment and installation of vcenter server 8 in the next video so thank you very much